Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Top 5. I'm here today with Ferdinand, the Cardboard Stacker. Hello everyone. And we are going to be doing another Top 5 video. Today's Top 5 up on the list is... It's our heaviest game. The most weighty games in our collection, yeah. not, not, not not games that are like... No, no. like not, not mechanically wise. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they might be mechanically as well. Oh, they can. But most likely it'll be just heaviest games we own. Physi this yeah, is, phys physically. Physically. This will be a fun little uh, top five. We, we pretty much know what we each, each other have as far as heavy games go, just because we know each other's collections. So we're not going to try and hide them as much for us, but you guys will get to decide. And we'll talk a little about all those games. Some of them I haven't even played because they've been so, mm -hmm. it's so hard to get to the tabletop. Um, <laughs> well, uh, just like as always, I'll talk about our first uh, sponsors. A, the uh, uh, this is the Game Anywhere table. If you're interested in picking one of these up, it has magnetic aspects to it. On each of the player areas, you can actually take something from the back end and uh, cup holders as well. And from the bottom, you can pull it off, little card holders, and stick it to your uh, mat here. And it's actually magnetic, so it's yep. really nice. There you go. So this one here is not magnetic, not, not in the middle. There are though, there are ones that are magnetic in the middle, but yep, on the side there. Oh, uh, there. Oh, oh, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty heavy. It's not going to go anywhere. And not only that, but it, uh, we also have uh, Black Thumb Creations dice towers here. There are also uh, uh, opportunities to pick these guys up. We'll be using these as well. We'll be rolling two dice, uh, and not only are we going to be rolling the two dice here, but we're also going to be saying whoever has the higher number will decide who is going to go first or second in the. Uh, in the in the transitional period, okay? Okay. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and roll well, the dice. Any, well, well, anyway, before that, um, this this is in part of the, the rules of what we brought up to you know here to share with us would be. I mean, it's this is not exactly you know the heaviest right thing. Uh, yeah. Stuff. I mean, we also made it so a. We don't include expansions unless it can fit in the box. So mm -hmm. games like The Others and Rising Sun, I've decided to exclude from my collection. So it can't be a box with another box. With yeah, another box. otherwise I'd have yeah. a lot of games out here. So these are mainly just singular games uh, that can all fit inside one box. And uh, it might include an expansion or two, but mine actually don't. None of my games will have any expansions in them. They're just simply large, large games all on their own. Mm -hmm. But uh, that, those are mainly the rules we've set forward. I think that's about it. Yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and take our dice and we're going to go ahead and roll them. I got nine. I have eleven. All right, so I'll go. I'll go first. All right, go ahead. Yeah, this is well. This is the smallest game. Of course, it's going to be the smallest game in um, in our top five. But it is Sunrise City. Sunrise City. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's it it's. Well, I I think some of the bigger boxes actually are much lighter than this, and th the reason why is this is a more heavy game because it has really thick 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 tiles in here, and the whole thing. It's oh just wow, this is tiled. filled, yeah. filled to the brim, and these thick, thick tiles too. Yeah, so because you're building up in the city, this is a really cool game. It doesn't have much uh, appreciation. I think it certainly does. So you really enjoy this game too? Yes, I do. So, and you know, these are oh, these are really, these all these components these are very are really thick. nice. You know? Wow, that's mm -hmm. excellent. I've never played this game. Well, this is, was this was my second Kickstarter ever. Oh wow. Yeah. And doing this. Was you know the company name? Yeah. Uh, Clever Mojo Joy Games. Clever Mojo. Yep. Okay. Sunrise City. Yep. Thick, beautiful uh, components. Designed by um, 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 Isaiah Vallejo. Oh, Isaiah Vallejo. Okay, yeah. cool. So that's he's actually did he actually does stuff with um, what's their name now? Uh, oh, I can't remember the name now. Uh, they do Villages of Valerian stuff like that. Isn't he the Daily Magic? Daily Magic, yeah. right? He does stuff with them. Awesome. Sunrise City. And this City. does include the expansion as well. So it's it's completely it is, filled, it is all yeah. complete inside. But yeah. I mean really Kickstarter <laughs> expansions that are included in the box, that's yeah. kind of like part of the game in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Um okay, I guess I'm up to my number five. And my number five has a large box, but is probably about as heavy I think as it's this the, game. I think it's the largest box. Yeah, it is the largest box, I think. Well, next, in length, in length. In length. Yeah. And that game is uh, Twilight Imperium 3, and you would assume based on the, uh, not only the uh, size of the game, whatnot, but like the, the, uh, the wear and tear of this, that I've probably played it a bunch. The answer is no. I haven't played it once yet. I, I got. I, yeah. I think people play this at least once or twice a year. Yeah, I got but this. Unless from, you're really into it. I got this from a garage sale, like, 
three years ago, before I started getting into, uh, four years ago, before I started really getting into gaming, I mean, I've always been a gamer, I've always played these the modern style games for a long time, but this one specifically, I saw it randomly, I remember hearing about it, I wanted to pick it up, so I did, it was missing a few pieces, so I actually spent the time to recreate those pieces, print them out, make them look nice, mm -hmm. and then never played the game. I'd like to play it, at some point, maybe if you're going to meet me at Gen Con or whatever, you want to get me into a game of TI3, I'd be happy to try it, or even the new one, TI4, the recreation yeah. that's come out. And this one, just this is just the base game, right? This is just the base game. Nothing else to it. It's probably, it's probably about as heavy as Sunrise City. Maybe a little, maybe a little more heavier than, than that one. Let me see. Let's see. Yeah. There you go. I think it's maybe like a one or two pounds more. Yeah, maybe, maybe about a pound. Uh, so yeah, Twilight Imperium Third Edition, a large game. This is actually made by Fantasy Flight, a game by Christian uh, T. Peterson. Epic board game of galactic conquest, politics, and trade. Mm -hmm. All right, number four. Number four. Four. Five. Four for number four. I should get this now. Okay. I'll let you go. All right, then. Cool. So my next game, or games, is actually a tie because I really couldn't tell the difference without actually standing on a scale and measuring them. So I decided to include them both, but there'll be a shorter experience, a shorter explanation for both of them. The first one being Fallen Land, a post-apocalyptic board game. This game is stacked to the brim with cards and a huge board. Yeah. has a bunch of components. Ca cards will always be a factor when, when it comes to it in games. Yeah, this, this one has player boards. I mean, this has so many cards in it, it's ridiculous. Oh, the board. Here's the, oh, the board's really... And then there's... Here yeah, there's, there's probably like cards. eight of those decks in here. Five, uh, six. Plus, uh, there's an expansion that you can include all of this in, but I didn't uh, include it. I have the actual other one. This is actually a newer copy of the game. It actually hasn't even had the punches pulled out of it. I probably will do a giveaway for it at some time. This is actually a very fun, like, thematic-styled, story-based RPG game that involves a little bit of, a little bit of dice rolling uh, along with basic RPG elements. It kind of reminds me of um, Arabian Nights without, without, uh, with, with dice rolling and competitive aspects to it. So you don't get to choose your own adventure, but it has that RPG aspect as far as the game goes. Uh, it's, it's super fun. I really, really enjoyed this game. Uh, the board itself is a little lackluster, but everything else is really nice. The components is very nice. Uh, the amount of time it takes to play the game is, is like an hour per player, so it can get pretty thick. And you can have a singular player mode up to five to six players as well. It's a beautiful little game, though. I really do enjoy it. And I like the, robot too. I like the uh, density of the game as well. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, and my other one on the list is a game you guys might have heard of. It's by Videl Lacerda. Oh, and the last one, sorry, I gotta say that what the last one's by. This one's by John Lundgren and Sean Cahill. Uh, this is v Vidal, um, Vital Lacerda, and this is called Lesboa. Lesboa is basically, uh, you're repairing the city of Lesboa after hurricanes and fires earthquake, and all that. Earthquake, earthquake. It's an earthquake. A yeah. big earthquake destroyed the city, and your objective is to rebuild it. Of course, it is uh, based on you being one of the most important people in the town, spending money, uh, rebuilding the city, getting rid of the rubble and all that kind of stuff. It's uh, Eagle Griffin Games, and it is... Um, really really heavy <laughs> it is also really heavy in uh, theme as well as in the components as well this game has a ton of stuff i'm not even going to begin to pull it out but it is be be very beautiful inside i'll just show you like the basic stuff there's a huge huge board, huge board. uh there is huge player yeah. boards Ooh, look, a nice insert. there's a nice insert involved there's tons of different pieces and whatnot going on it's it's, it's big and beautiful it has oh. it has its own little game trays kind of thing not by game trays but it has a game tray nice in it have Player aids for everyone. Yeah, there's a player aid for everybody in the game, aid and, book. and aid it's a book. book. It's huge. <laughs> yeah, uh, this one actually takes a, a lot to learn. If you're interested in checking out how to play it and whatnot, uh, and you end up picking it up, you can uh, check out our review for it. I explain it in uh, pretty quick detail. I thought that a lot of our reviewers unfortunately didn't do a very good job of uh, explaining how to ex uh, play the game, so I went ahead and did my own. Whether uh, that is true or not will be up for you to decide, though. <laughs> Nevertheless, Lesboa and Fallen Lands are my number four. You snuck in one in there. <laughs> I, I, snuck in, I snuck in a game. I couldn't help it because I couldn't decide which one All was right. heavier. Here we go. Here's one Ugh. that you play to just to enjoy the game and not actually the game mechanics. Well, we were just talking about this one. This is Arabian <laughs> Nights. Yes. Tales of the Arabian Nights. I know. And the thing that makes this really heavy 
is, of course, if you know about the Arabian Night, it's also a, a huge book as well. Then this, therefore the game, has a huge book. It's <laughs> a it's a choose your own adventure board game. It's the mm -hmm. only one of its kind so far that I have seen. There, there's there are very few right now. There are very few. The only one yeah. I know of, at least. Yeah. And it's beautiful. It has tons of stuff going on. But, it is an experience, yeah, nonetheless. But, but for, for, I think for most of them, for a storybook game of you choose your adventure, I think this is the, the one with the biggest book still. Yeah. I mean, I don't know of any other ones, like I said. Oh, we got, no, there's Above and Below, there is okay, uh, Near they're, and Far. Okay, Above and Below, Near and Far. I haven't played those. Uh, I know about them, but... Agent of Smurfs by 8 Some Games. That, okay. That's also very good. If you love, like, James Bond and the spy kind of, the gentleman spy kind of thing. But this is, like, yeah. the original, right? This is, like, the Grand yeah, Daddy. Actually, this is, this is a reprint of one I think they did in the, I think, 80s. Okay. Yeah, so, or I think early 90s, I can't remember. But, yeah, so they did, they did a whole book on it, and now it is this, so that... If you pick this up, it is... Tales of the Arabian Nights by yeah. Zeman Games. I think it's still by Zeman, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. And and still, I believe who's it made by? I don't know. You don't know. I, I, don't, I don't see it on here. Yeah, it's probably in the rule book. Comment. Yeah. Somebody can comment and tell us. Okay. Let us know in the comment section. Yep, yeah, but this is one of my first games. Did. Like, I think this is my third game ever. I want to get this game. Yeah. I borrowed it from him from like a couple months. Got to play it a couple yeah. times. Really enjoyed it, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like this, this is my third game. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. <laughs> it was a good choice. Yeah. Okay. Going for number three now. Come here, dice. Let's go with a bigger one now. Five. Oh, okay, reroll. Ah, I got five. Five for number three. You got five. five. All right. I gotta, get, I gotta get lucky on this one here. Twelve. Six and six, baby. Well, well six I can't and six. beat that. I got I'm seven. just gonna go ahead and go. Mine will be a short and sweet uh, one here because I've only played it once or twice. And uh, it just set my shelf ever since. It's my Fantasy Flight, and it is called... Uh, World of Warcraft, the board game. It's for two to six players, ages 12 and up. It is licensed by um, Blizzard, and like I said, Fantasy Flight is who made it. Uh, I don't know the creator of this one either, but... It's probably a team of people. Yeah, I imagine it would be. Uh, this one has a huge board. It has tons of miniatures, and I mean, like, it's got a ton of stuff, and they're all heavy, thick plastic, too. Oh, my the, goodness. They, oh, look at this board. Player boards included. Huge rule book. Uh, I've heard mixed things about this game. I thought it was okay. It came out a little while ago. And it has the moving around, killing the stuff, fighting the bosses, all that kind of stuff. It's oh, dudes on a more stuff. Dudes on a board. Yeah, there's there's so much stuff in this game. There's so many miniatures, so many dudes. So many, these are all the characters. Uh, before Kickstarter miniature games got it's their big explosion, this and StarCraft were were almost kings as far as how how much stuff. And Ti. And Ti, yeah. But t this this has more stuff than that. This has more miniatures, thicker miniatures. Uh, just tons, tons of stuff in it. Tons. Unless you're talking about other zombie games. <laughs> well, well, what other ones bit this period in time when they came out? I don't. I mean, I, I mean, I, this grandiose, right? Yeah, there's so much in here. There's so much content. Whether or not you're you're going to enjoy it is up to you. I've heard a lot of, like I said, mixed reviews for it. I thought it was okay. I enjoyed it. I would probably play it again. I do really, really like World of Warcraft. So I, I, I played that with, I, uh, I met my wife on there. Um, I never played it. Yeah, it's an MMO, <laughs> so it's going to be, you know, your poison whether or not you play it. I played it for five years, so I think it holds a place in my heart just because of that. I know a lot of people who have been searching for this kind of a game. In fact, it's a, it's a grail game for certain people as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yet, nevertheless, World of Warcraft, the board game, this is probably like, what, 15 pounds, something like that. I, I'm not good, a good judge of weight as far as that goes. Ten? T 10 to 15 somewhere? I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Pretty heavy. All right, because I know the weight of my game. So yep. <laughs> that, that's heavy. Anyway, it is my my turn, right? Mm -hmm. All right, here it comes. This is recently reprinted, the Argent, the Consortium. I knew this was coming out. Level <laughs> ninety nine games. I know. I'm so excited because I'll get to uh, be meeting Bradley uh, at Gen Con. Yeah, Mr. Talton, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. He's a uh -huh. wonderful, wonderful guy. So, wonderful, beloved game. Uh, I believe. All their games are good. Yeah. I haven't played a game I didn't like for level ninety nine. Two thousand fourteen. They just reprinted it. This came out. Um, they the Kickstarter was last year. Now they have reprinted. I also got a copy of this as well, um, but unfortunately, this I don't think was heavier than any of my games. Mm -hmm. It might be maybe maybe Ti. I'm not sure. I had to weigh them this, perfectly. This but. could be almost the heavy like heaviest mechanically game. Oh in, yeah, and there's a lot to range. this game. Grant, my cameraman, really really enjoyed this game. I was I was on the fence with it because I know it's a really good game for some it's a, reason. It's, it is a worker placement. It has a lot of different mechanics you have to know. Um, each of the uh, one one of the things that makes this game different. Uh, each of the workers have something they can do. Yep. For you. Oh yeah. And, and so you can choose the different workers. And there's so many variants because you build the school and Secret each of the rooms in and, it. And say you're playing like a four-player game. There's like twelve different rooms. 
Those trouble rooms can be flipped, has different abilities. There's advanced There's, modes yeah. to the game. Mm -hmm. There's a small expansion added as well into yeah. the game. And, you know, and you're not going to play with everything in the game. No, no, no way. No. No, it's, it's thick. This one's probably as thick. Maybe a little, it's, it's Lisboa thickness almost. Lisboa is more complex, I think, than this one, but this one has a lot of content, a lot of yeah. well, options. The, well, the thing is, you can, make, you can make a lighter game, and so it has a lot of punch, though. We played yeah. one that... Which, this is a which lighter game thought, than Lisboa, thought, I think, yeah. but it has a lot of content yeah, in it. We, we played a game that we thought was going to be nicer because there isn't any, like, thrashing or... Thrashing. You can make this take that if you want. We took that out. It's still a really, like, tough game, which everyone... Like trying to just grab as many points as possible, and it's good looking. It's a really yeah. nice reprint. This was excellent. Yeah. I was very this, excited when I got yeah. this game. The, uh, another reason why I have a my personal insert in here. He and even inserted and he sleeved the cards. Yep, sleeve. he, he likes sleeving it. Sleeving adds a lot to the weight of the game too. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that. Also, we got metal coins. I, I don't like the coins in the game, so I replaced it with metal coins. So that's really nice. Uh, so yay. <laughs> oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah, and I, then, I like them too. I like the feel of and that. And then I didn't like the magic either, so I replaced it that too. Oh, wow. So you actually have yep. like little like jade and stuff Yeah, we like got that. aquamarine and we got uh, lapis. Lapis lazuli. Yeah. Yep. That's super cool. So, that, yeah. And it also contains expansion, so that's why it weighs a little bit more. But, yeah. One of my favorite games, probably even my top five, maybe. Really? I mean, yeah. I, I would believe it. You talk about it a lot, so he really, he really <laughs> is into it. Yeah. Because this game always changes you always can find something new in this game yeah Argent the consortium level 99 games and it was designed by uh trey chambers trey chambers so i mean i think if you know the designer of the game it's probably a good <laughs> good, good indication that you enjoyed the game as well yeah all right are you ready for number two two all right number two all right here we go yeah ah. Ten. <laughs> Twelve. all right fine i'll go first fine here we go. This is my number one game. Number one? Yep. Num Battlecon. Battlecon. Yep. Another and level 99 game. Yes, I just This is by Talton, isn't it? Yeah, yes, this is by him, yes. And it, yeah, so it's my number one game. I mean, this is just only part of the things I have to bring if I want to play the game. This is just the characters themselves. Really? Yes. So, so there's more to this or no? Yeah. Excuse me? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so like all the other stuff, like the base, like the other cards that you actually add into when you want to play, and some of the other mats, play mats, stuff is actually in the box. But this is this is the box uh, of just all the characters. About you know, well, most of the characters, because now they release another one. And oh then my they gosh! It, and then another one again. But this is like I believe this is about sixty characters in here. Yeah, a lot. Mm -hmm. So this is, contains, I think. The Devastation game, which is the game, the box you see here. So, and then also War of Indians and I believe Faded Indians. And so I think there's three then plus the promos here. But so actually, what uh, would you recommend them getting all of this or would just the base? Oh no, be okay? they, I believe my favorite right now, and I would recommend if anyone wants to check out Battlecon, like just to get in there, put yeah. their feet in there. First of all, the online game's coming out very soon. Okay. And I'm actually might afraid that it might go. It might fade out in my number one because I might be playing that more. But it doesn't matter because it's Battlecon. But uh, if you're looking to get into it, I recommend you get into the latest one, which is called Trials. I think they're, it's the best design characters in the game so far. And so Trials, Trials of Indians, which is the most re recent, you know, it's a, it, yes, it is expansion, but it's also just a, you know, what do you call those games that's just... Standalone. There it's you a go. standalone expansion. Yeah, there you go. Standalone expansion that you just play right out of the box. They have box toxins instead of these filers. I have to modify these filers so they fit everything. Some of the characters, some of them have few, none of like different tokens they have to use in the game. I mean, this is for me, this is my favorite game because I think it really touches on both the theme of each character, but also the mechanic. It's like the mechanic does really equate to their their th thematic side. At some point, are. he's going to show me how to play this game. You haven't played this yet. Shame on you. <laughs> I don't have it. I have too okay. many games already. All right. You and got it. Play it with me. So there you go. So that is... Whoa. 
a well-used game of yeah. BattleCon. It has, yes, you see all the destruction, it's called love. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not going anywhere, so you don't need to, it doesn't matter, you're not going to sell it, basically. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing is, they're going to be coming with another reprint for Devastation itself. We need a bigger box for you, then. Yeah. Oh, they will get a bigger box, I'm sure. All right. Mm. Are you ready for my number two? Mm-hmm. All right. I need both hands for this one. Ugh. This oh. is called Cthulhu Wars, and it's by Sandy Peterson. This is a massive area control game. It's it's I, I I liken it to Risk in how area control it is minus rolling dice. This is actually more oh. based on uh, moving around the board using your abilities to your advantage. Every single race has its own uniqueness to it. And it's a really beautiful game. Has really beautiful big fat miniatures. It has tons and tons of uh, strategy and complexity. Gotta see those miniatures. Uh, yeah, I mean, next to, I guess, the the Ooh. Death May Dying game with the Cthulhu thing going out. Ooh, uh, look at that. This has probably one of the biggest miniatures I've seen for a board game next to, of course, like I said, the new Cool Mini or Not. Um, and this is just, I believe this is just the base game, yeah? This is just the base game. Yeah, there is there's there is way more to this game. This is Cthulhu right here. He's big. Like, he's bigger than my hand, right? So he's pretty big. Well, he's about the size of my hand, I guess. Uh, but it's still pretty big for a miniature. And then, of course, like the King in Yellow, so on and so forth. Uh, show, show, Shignoth? 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 Yeah, that's how you, yeah, that's how you say it. It's a hard one to pronounce. And then, of course, those like the Void Spawn. But it's got a ton of stuff. It's got a huge board. Yeah, very, it, very pretty, grotesque, but pretty minis. A lot of components in this game. And you gotta make sure you put it back like just right because there's so much stuff going on. Beautiful, just like that. And as I said, I, I seen the whole, someone who has the whole collection out. Really, yeah, yeah. I mean, he, I've seen a couple playtesters with all their stuff. I, I have just the basic stuff. Um, but I've always liked this game. I played it live a couple times already. Uh, <laughs> Across here are, I think, all, all the, the backers. All the different backers. Yep. Across all the entire I didn't know this box the first of the time game. We opened it. Uh, it is a big game, though. It's yeah. really fun. I really enjoyed it, but I used to really like Risk until I, I started getting into the fact that I didn't mm -hmm. like games that involved a lot of chance. And this gives me all of that feeling of the nostalgia of that game with actual complexity and like difficult choices in the game. And if you lose, it's your fault to an extent. I mean, obviously there's the social aspect of a game, but when you're making choices, it does greatly affect you if you don't make the correct ones. Uh, Cthulhu Wars, a Sandy Peterson game, a wonderful, wonderful area control game. If you're here watching Sandy, please consider sending more <laughs> so I can review them, because I very much so do enjoy this game. Yeah. Cool, cool. All right, and finally we have our number one. Number one! You heaviest ready? games on our shelves. This is the heaviest one on my shelf, yes. Yeah, eleven. Oh uh, well, 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 well. Well, I believe mine is heavier than yours, so I'm gonna let you go first. Is yours heavier? I believe so. You sure? I'm pretty sure. Okay. I'll let you guys decide. This, this is my heaviest game. Oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> level ninety nine. Millennium Blade. Yes. Level ninety nine again. Again, this is like three so, in a row. I know. This is their. One of their big, one of the bigger games. I told you it was a shill. A game about collectible card games, and so guess what? You it's Magic have, the Gathering in a box. Yeah, or you, or Yu Gi Oh in or the box. In a box. I, I like saying Yu Gi Oh because I think the characters are kind of like more the Yu Gi Oh kind of base characters anyway. I got a copy of this. It's excellent. It is very fun. Yeah. Only thing I didn't like about it originally was the paper money, but then I realized how it was put together, and I really enjoyed that aspect. And so the game itself is. Here you go, all sleeved cards. There Is that you all go. the expansions and all that? Yes, expansions yeah, right now. They're they're coming with a more of the, one of the, another bigger expansion as well. <laughs> but then that one has team play. That has so much stuff yeah. in it. So this includes, yep, I think six or seven. Yes, yeah, seven of the small expansions plus one of the big expansions. Kind of just a base game. Yeah, I think, and I personally think the base game is all you need to play this game. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you really dig it, then get the expansions. Yeah. But you don't need all the extra. I mean, stuff. yeah, so much of our there's so much, ability, yeah. Too much rarity. I don't. I don't mind. Like, get, get be, be careful. I don't want to miss any of these guys. Like, yeah. shuffle them up. I used to have this in the binder until they released the expansion, and now I have to keep it like this. I'm still working to get either a insert for it or making my own. I probably will have to need a bit more help for this. But I know when when broken the, token. It's time to make a. Uh, time to make I a. I know. Uh, I'm pointing at you, broken token. Time to, I time want to you make to make an insert. 
All right, there you go. Malayan Blades, it's good, really fun. I really enjoyed it, it has great artwork. Yeah. It feels like you're playing a deck builder, or you're, deck, you're building a deck and then playing it in a tournament. It does feel like that. Mm -hmm. It's You're buying, it's you're buying very, boosters with money. It's very one of a kind. And you're selling them, you it's, can trade them as well. It's very one of a kind it's of a game. It's that whole compass of that. Another oh, Bradley Talton yeah. game. Yeah. All right, are you guys ready for my number one, the biggest game, the heaviest game, and a game I have never played? I know that's like really, I don't know how like ex <laughs> how exciting that is, but this one is Galactic Rebellion. I got, I got, I got to see, I got to, I got to see, I got to see first. Hold on, hold on. Uh, it's by e oh, Okay, you win. It's by you Eagle win. Griffin Games. And mine, mine feels a lot more dense. This is actually, to, to be fair though, this game is a um, exclusive copy. I think there's only a hundred or so made. And it actually has a signature and a, a, all that in there. It was from the Kickstarter campaign, and I got it from one of the. Look, uh, I'm still putting out boards. People who work there, yeah. All this stuff, and then all of this. Insert the miniatures in there, yes. Yeah, it has. I mean, it's got like a full bag of coins. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine different bags of miniatures. And then of course it's got a bunch of tiles. It's got a bunch of coins and all this kind of stuff. But yeah, these are like just just the there, metal oh, yeah. coins well, metal alone. Metal coins are going. It's got you. cards in it as well. Oh, these are really pretty. Thick shits. Yeah, they're nice. They're really nice uh, coins. And like I said before, it comes with a bunch of little things here. But there's somewhere in here is actually a signed, like exclusive thing. I don't even know where it is anymore. I think it's still in there. I didn't get rid of it. It's got a big, big, huge sheet that you're going to be using throughout the game. These are all, those are all player boards as well as yeah. additional boards. Look how many game. games you can play, and it's double sided. You're not going to need to re, <laughs> to re, uh, what do you call it? You're not going to need to like uh, print out, print out any extras for here. It even has one of these little mat things going on with it. I don't know. It has tons of stuff, and you have to really make sure you. Jam I believe it all this game in. is closely related to another game I really like called Ages of Empire or Empires Three. I think I think so. From what I was told. I want to play it. I just haven't had the time. There's a huge amount of rules involved in the game. There is a ton of stuff, and I want to dedicate some time to sit down, just like with uh, um, what do you call it, uh, TI3. I want to sit down with players who already know how to play. They can just go ahead and teach me, because realistically, it's so much time out of my day, and I spend so much time already checking out other games that uh, to play one of these huge ones is going to be a colossal uh, galactic ex uh, expedition for me. But anyway, so that is Galactic Rebellion by Eagle Griffin Games All and right. Level 99's Millennium Blades. Mm -hmm. uh, Glenn Drover, Bradley Talton Jr. Mm -hmm. So I believe mine weighs around 12 to 13 pounds. I, this is probably about 15 pounds, huh? I have no idea. It's very, it's, it's very heavy. I know, I know, but I think Gloomhaven with the with the insert, with the you know wooden insert, I think it's about 26 pounds. This has 400 yeah. plastic miniatures, I can including kill a small eight dog. capital <laughs> ship fleet miniatures, cards, tiles, wooden cubes, tokens, and boards. Quite a lot, quite a lot in this game. Mm -hmm. um, now, if I were to recommend one of the five games I have shown you here today. And including you, you can only pick one though. Oh no. Uh, I would probably recommend, it really depends. If you like games that are very thick and like uh, Yuri style, you should probably check out Lisboa. And if you like the area control aspect of a game, check out Cthulhu Wars. I think personally, I like Cthulhu Wars of all these games the most. I think it's really fun. And like I said, it's got the nostalgia for me. So uh, Cthulhu Wars would be my favorite, but if you want something thick, thick, Lisboa has that, and it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I'm going to suggest mine will be Argent Consortium. That needs a lot more love. And yeah. And it's a really good work of It placement. really is. Yeah. Like, for a game I don't enjoy that much, I know it's good. You and, know? <laughs> and again, I think Level 9 also just bridges that thematic and mechanic kind of things together. And I think I want to play it with more people. Like, I need to play that with you as well. Yeah, because I, I, I saw the potential as I was playing it and stuff like that, and I'm like, I like this kind of, but... Mm -hmm. I don't know. It, it, it what, was, what was the number? I'm not people? very good at those kind of games. It's so complex. Like yeah. Lisboa, I, I like it and it's beautiful, but it's it's hard for well, me. Well, you got to keep playing games. You got to exercise your mind. I know. More. Maybe my <laughs> mental capacity is just not there yet. Yeah. But um, yeah, so Arge of the Consortium, an excellent, beautiful game. And Cthulhu Wars, a big, fat, miniature dudes on a board <laughs> risk style game. <laughs> Overall, though, uh, thank you for watching this video yeah. with us. And let us know what is your heaviest game on your shelf. Yeah, please like, right. share, and subscribe if you would, as well as checking out who? The Garbage Stacker. You can check me out at my YouTube channel, The Garbage Stacker. Link will be in the description below. Yeah. And you can also check my website, www. 
thecarpetsacker.com. Awesome. We're also giving away uh, flanks right now up on our, uh, our website, uh, unfilteredgame.com slash giveaways. You can actually just type in board game giveaways and you'll find us right there at the top, So, which is pretty cool. Really happy mm -hmm. with that. All right, guys, thanks for watching uh, another top five video with me and Ferdinand. And as always, we look forward to seeing See you, you next, next time. time. And don't forget to keep stacking games. Yeah. <laughs> thanks.